Um, so I will be playing a short tune called The Highlander's Jig. It's an Irish folk song. And although it's short, I would like to dedicate it, I would like to dedicate it to Mr. Kerr. We're here to remember Danny Gayer. He was born in Limerick City, County Limerick, Count Limerick, Ireland, September 19, 1946, to Thomas Valentine and Patricia Walsh Gayer. Danny and his family came to New Orleans in May of 1957, and by way of Natchitoches, ended up in Shreveport about eight months later. He and his siblings enrolled in St. Teresa's grade school January 1958. I met him on that first day of school because the Gayers were all put back one year. They had been homeschooled for a few years and they needed to see which grade that they would be in. Within days, they were put up in the grade that was age appropriate. So Danny moved up and out of my class while his sister Ina moved up and into my class. They were very well read, but math was a little lacking. And even to this day, Danny still had the occasional problem doing grades by hand. <laughs> Danny played cricket in Ireland, but no baseball. So he learned the sport quickly and well, and played third base for the St. Teresa summer teams. When he finally got to Jesuit High School, he became a left fielder, not because he was fast but because he could see the ball ahead of time, maybe get a little jump on it, possibly get to the ball in time. But meanwhile, he was also acting in the Jesuit Shakespearean plays, and in the spring of 1964, his senior year, he had to have an escort from a playoff baseball game to the land building at the Louisiana State Fairgrounds to be on stage for Shylock in The Merchant of Venice, all in the same afternoon. He later received a Best Acting Award for his role, which usually went to adult theater actors in the city of Shreveport, but back to baseball. He hit a home run in the state championship game to help Jesuit to his first baseball state championship. The hit cleared the left fielder, rolled forever, because Danny again was not known for his speed, and because the ball rolled far enough, he was able to round the bases and score the home run. Danny began teaching three years out of high school, that would be 1967, at Sewell Academy in Denton, where he taught theater, English, and soccer. He then taught for the next 47 years. He mainly taught English, even though he spoke Gaelic as a second language or first language. <laughs> okay. Last week, when he was taking speech therapy, he not only counted the English in English, but he also, but he and Tommy also counted in Gaelic as well to impress his speech therapist. <laughs> After he taught in Texas, he then moved to Shreveport with the love of his life, Sally, in 1980 to teach at Southfield School until 1991. He then taught at his alma mater, Jesuit High School, for one year. 
And from 1992 to 1999, he taught at Huntington High School, where he was the yearbook sponsor. In 1999 until this May, he's been at Magnet High School. He has taught gifted English and philosophy. He sponsored the soccer team, the Japanese club, the decathlon, and all gifted activities from the talent show to coffee house. While doing this, he and Sally had two daughters, Caroline and Sarah. Sarah is with us today to celebrate his life. She is here with Danny's brothers, Tommy and John, and his sisters, Ina and Hannah, and their families. His nephew, Stephen, is here as he has been with Danny for the last few weeks. Danny's dog, Lila, is at home remembering her, him in her own way. Danny was a member of Holy Trinity Catholic Church, where he was a lector, Eucharistic minister, and usher. He was also an accountant. Remember his math skills. <laughs> He spent many Sunday afternoon counting the Sunday tithing for the weekend masses. It came out accurate most of the time. <laughs> Danny taught me many things about teaching. He told me that, and this is a quote, a teacher cannot fake passion nor pleasure of teaching. Danny had both, and it was all real. He never faked it, and the students knew it. He said, teachers who enjoy teaching do not count days the years or days to retirement. He did not retire from teaching. He moved on to a new school to help medical students learn about his body. He believed that the, way, the pay for teaching was the pleasure of teaching. Teaching was never a job for Danny. Teaching was his vocation. He told me that when you go into the classroom, be honest, Fair, firm, friendly, courteous, and above all, listen. I know, what, I know that this is what a good teacher does, as this is what he did, and I've been trying to do it since. I will leave you with one of the last things that Danny wrote. I would rather spend my day teaching at Cattle Magnet High School with my wonderful students, interesting colleagues, professional administrators, and supportive parents do you blame me? Daniel James Dennis Gayer, we remember you today. Now we have a couple of students who will perform. Mr. Geyer was a remarkable individual who inspired all of his students. Uh, this piece is an aria from the opera Die Todstadt, which means the dead city. This was an opera that Mr. Geyer told me he wanted to see, and he was so important to um, many of us. It's very appropriate that it addresses how we overcome the loss of a loved one. This is Marietta's lead.
since many of you here today are Danny's former students, you know that he spent roughly six weeks of your life teaching you Moby Dick. <laughs> Most people, upon seeing the title of the book, that's all they know about it. But since Danny spent that much time with it, over 47 years, reading it 80 plus times, uh, an excerpt from Moby Dick is appropriate. <laughs> and I'm nice. Um, indeed. I have been read, asked to read an excerpt from Herman Melville's Great Moby Dick, which, if you're one of uh, Mr. Gare's students, you know he adored passionately. And then perhaps not, if, even if you weren't his student, uh, but in a way, I think we were all a student of Mr. Gay. So, this excerpt begins. Even Solomon, he says, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Give not thyself up, then, to fire, lest it invert thee, deaden thee, as for the time it did me. There is a wisdom that is woe, but there is a woe that is madness. And there is a Catskill eagle in some souls that can alike dive down into the blackest gorges and soar out of them again and become invisible in the sunny spaces. And even if he forever flies within the gorge, that gorge is in the mountains, so that even in his lowest swoop, the mountain eagle is still higher than other birds upon the plain, even though they soar. So I liked the analogy in that last part. Before we open this up for people remembering Danny, a few people have asked why the number 42 is on the back of the shirts. Uh, in Moby Dick, if you really didn't know the answer to the question or what was being discussed, the answer was 42. It answers everything. And now, David Wells, chairman of the gifted department, will say a few words as we start the open mic part of this, remembering Danny. I didn't meet Danny Gayer until he began teaching here at Magnet High in uh, 1999. It was strange, we both grew up in Shreveport, but as I tell people, we went to different schools together. Uh, he happened to be on the low end of the totem, totem pole when he first came to Magnet and had to float. Teachers know what that is, you go to a different room every hour based on you know, who has a planning period at a certain hour. So, by chance, he floated into my room, and my daughter, this was her first year at Magnet High, and she was in the class. So it's ninth grade English, and a new teacher, and I was very interested to see how my daughter was going to perform there in the school. And uh, Danny Gayer was the greatest teacher. He just knew so much. I would pretend I was doing some paperwork at my desk, but I would just listen. And uh, he taught Romeo and Juliet, and he taught Hemingway, and I'll never forget, he would say, uh, Hemingway believed that life is like a bullfight, and we're the bull. Uh, but he uh, continued uh, in our department, and later on I had the opportunity to work with him in the same classroom, in what we used to call American Studies, where we had a an English teacher and a history teacher in the same room and, and two classes of kids. Oh, that was a wonderful experience. I posted on my Facebook page that my friend Danny Gare was a gentleman and a scholar. He was a gentleman in every sense of the word. He was a kind and gentle person. All the years that I worked with him, all the years that I knew him, he never lost his temper. He never tried to humiliate or ridicule any student, no matter how much that student might have deserved it. <laughs> he was uh, someone who treated everyone with respect. He was a generous person. Every charitable cause that came through our school or were raising money for this disaster relief or whatever, he always gave generously out of his own pocket. He and I exchanged uh, uh, birthday and Christmas greetings, I would give him a card. He would go to Barnes & Noble and buy me the latest hardcover biography of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> That's just the kind of guy he was. He was uh, genuinely interested in the students, their thoughts, their dreams, their reactions to literature, their reactions to anything. 
Uh, Danny would go out and solicit opinions to groups of students that he might not even know. He would go out in the hall. If his own class had not come in yet, he would just go out in the hall and see people that uh, just happened to be hanging around, and he would ask them, who do you think is going to win the World Cup? <laughs> do you think Rick Perry is going to get reelected over in Texas? Isn't Omar Finley the most popular kid in the school? I mean, he never lost a student election, did he? Do you have your tickets to see Denzel Washington? They're going to do a Raisin in the Sun on Broadway this summer. It was in the New York Times. He always wanted to hear what the students had to say. He always wanted dialogue in the class. Danny hated to give tests. Tests require that the, the room get very quiet. <laughs> this was so boring to Danny. He would get a test going and they would work for 10 or 15 minutes and he would just arbitrarily interrupt with some <laughs> joke or some rhetorical question or uh, you know something about uh, current events, anything, because he, he wanted to hear the students. He read their opinions. Oh, he read so much of student writing hundreds of thousands of essays and journal entries this guy read. He was interested in what the students had to say and what they thought about things. Well, I'll tell one uh, Moby Dick story. Uh, some of you have heard this. I've told this many times. One day, I was uh, in my part of the room. It was Danny's turn to teach, and he looked out on the room and didn't feel like he had 100% attention because about half the kids were looking at laptops. And so finally he said, you know, I'm thinking about banning laptops in this class. And so a few people perked up and, oh, Mr. Gayer, why are you going to do that? And he says, well, I don't want you guys looking at pictures of girls when I'm trying to teach about Moby Dick. <laughs> So that sank in for a minute, and then Bowen McCullough said, well, what if we're looking at pictures of girl whales? <laughs> I almost fell out of my chair. Bowen, <laughs> Bowen McCullough could crack me up any time. But later that same day, there was a cartoon that showed up on the bulletin board, and it was a uh, girl whale. She had a bow here, and she was uh, uh, winking, you know, long eyelashes, and the caption was, Call me, Ishmael. <laughs> and I'm told that uh, Megan Shacklett is the one who drew the cartoon. I, I, I'd love to have the original document, but uh, I'm afraid it's gone. Uh, Danny Gare was a scholar. He was a true intellectual. He read the New York Times every day. He read the New Yorker every week. One time we had, well, more than one time, we had the open house. We're trying to recruit eighth graders to come to our school. And I told those uh, parents and the eighth graders, I have a man here that's in my department who has read every book in the world. <laughs> and that's only a slight exaggeration. But I warn them, there's really only two types of books that he really, really loves, and those are fiction and nonfiction. <laughs> Danny Gayer knew Latin. He could do math. I've seen him do math. <laughs> he was good at math. He loved opera. We needed in our department to have someone teach philosophy. And we had to get this class approved through the State Department of Education. And some bureaucrat in Baton Rouge sent back the message that only a social studies teacher could teach, lab, uh, teach philosophy. So he was not certified in social studies, but he began to study, study some history, study some geography and economics, and take the online test to get certified as a social studies teacher. So he did that on his own time, and he paid the fee out of his own pocket. But that's the kind of guy he was, and he was a terrific uh, philosophy teacher too. Uh, Danny Gare would work the New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle while he was grading essays and watching the Saints play football all at the same time. That's what he would do on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, Chaucer, I believe, had uh, Danny Gare in mind 
when he wrote his description of the clerk of Oxford in the prologue to the Canterbury Tales. Filled with moral virtue was his speech, gladly would he learn and gladly teach. I have here uh, something uh, some of the students are familiar with. It's uh, what I call the Wellsocracy Award. Uh, this is the first posthumous Wellsocracy Award. I'd like to read it to you. A certificate certifying meritorious merit is hereby awarded to Danny Gator for quintessential quotidian quickwittedness, <laughs> profound professorial prowess, valuable volubility. Caddo Magnet High, Department of Redundancy Department, Office of Superfluous Alliteration, AD 2014. There's always a Latin phrase on these, and uh, Danny's is uh, primus inter pares, first among equals. And I have my own name here, of course, because I am the Wellsocrat in chief. <laughs> and the historical title I took for this is uh, Lord Protector of the Realm. I'd like to present this uh, Wells Oxford Award suitable for framing to uh, Sarah. Thank you. stage for anyone else that would like to come up and just tell us something about Danny. I'm Janice Hughes and I know many of you intimately because you were in my classroom. I know some of you parents as well. I brought notes because I didn't want to choke up and forget what I wanted to say. I first met Danny Gayer over 30 years ago in a philosophy class where I fell in love forever with his mind. His profound questions and incisive wit that was wont to set the table on a roar splashed eddies of delight amid some rather dry lectures. And later, when he came to Magnet, flowed around our lounge where we had lunch together, and the tables in the library where many of us shared faculty meetings, where his usually gentle chidings about everything from common core discussions to the misspellings and punctuation errors of the latest school board missive, <laughs> put smiles of agreement on all our faces, including those of our administrators. He was hell on comma faults. <laughs> and to you future seniors, so am I. <laughs> Any future commemorative object for Danny should include a whale or a soccer ball, or maybe a whale and a soccer ball. <laughs> we simply miss him. Last Tuesday got a bit dim for all of us. Thank you. Senior Hope of Inza, Danny's pastor, and uh, I'm in a time zone because I got to be back at church to do another service. But I do have a few thoughts I want to share. I didn't write anything down, but I want to speak from my heart. And the first is the Gear family. Uh, God bless you and be with you. You're a very, very special family, and Danny was a very, very special person. Uh, I first met Danny. When I went to Holy Trinity for the first assignment, walked into the rectory, uh, and there was Danny counting money. The good thing I didn't know the things about his time. <laughs> but we left Danny with a table full of money, and, uh, but to set the record straight, it was 100% correct. 
and uh, Danny did a fine job. He was our elector, Eucharistic minister, and I say a very dear friend. Danny had his life together. Uh, as the young people say, get it together. Well, he loved God 100%. He loved his family 100%. And he loved his students 100%. And he loved his friends 100%. And he put himself last. Not in a degrading way, but Scripture says that the last shall be first. In my spiritual imagination, I can see the good Lord saying, Danny, while you were on earth, you put yourself last. Now come on up here in the front row. And Danny did this. I was with the Garrett family with Danny's wife died and uh, memorial service for his daughter. And I'm here today. Uh, my prayers go out to him. There are many things that can be said about him because he was an exceptionally giving person. He was always there to give, and uh, Danny loved God, loved us. And as I would thumb through the scriptures, uh, trying to figure out a, a phrase that I can conclude my remarks with, it wouldn't be long that I would come up with this expression, like St. Joseph. Now I say this with deepest respect, don't report me to the Pope, because I'll be in trouble, you know? But I don't think there's enough in the Bible about St. Joseph. Uh, St. Joseph was uh, the foster father of Jesus. He was the husband of Mary. And he took care of Jesus, who was the Lord and Savior. And there's just a couple words about St. Joseph. And there's a lot about Mary. And there's a whole lot about Jesus because it's his book. But about St. Joseph, who I think was an outstanding saint, who did a beautiful job in taking care of his wife, Mary, and his foster child, Jesus. And this is what's said about <coughs> Joseph, the saint. He was a good and just man. I can truly say this about Danny Gare, that he was a good and just man. Go ahead. My friend named Cassigan couldn't be here today. She's in Ireland, but she would like me to read this for her. <clears throat> in memory of one of my favorite teachers, Danny Geyer, I learned yesterday that he passed away, which makes my being in Ireland so bittersweet. He is one of the most funny, well-spoken people I have ever had the pleasure to meet. I will definitely miss seeing his cheerful smile as I pass his room. Today I was able to write his name on a star to be put in the memory hall of, I can't pronounce this, I'm sorry, Cahersivan, Ireland. Kahar Saibi? thank you very much <laughs> for Danny's day. You'll be missed by many, but more importantly, you'll be remembered with great fondness. Thank you, Cassie. And, sorry, I'm not done yet, I'm long-winded. And for my own bit, by now, I'm sure that at least half of you are wondering about the costumes that you've seen. I'm, my name's Paige Hender, and I'm the incumbent president for the Japanese Culture Club, which was one of Mr. Geyer's many hobby, not hobbies, I'm sorry. But it was one of the things that he took charge of. And if I were to think of one situation that perfectly described my experience with him, it would be whenever my friend Madison, the president from last year, and I were planning the end of the year party. We were giving presentations in my English class, and Madison came in because it was her lunch hour. And so Mr. Geyer stopped the presentations, and he let us make the call to Tokyo where we were getting our food. And they said that they wouldn't accept the a credit card. <laughs> Sorry. They wouldn't accept it until the day of, even though Madison had a credit card with her. And so Mr. Geyer said, try mine. And this had been the second time that he had directly given two 17-year-old girls his credit card. <laughs> <laughs> the first time being toward her a dunk booth for the picnic. <laughs> and we got our order placed and we were like, Mr. Geyer, are you going to be coming to the party? Because, you know, food and stuff, food's great. And so he says, oh no, I can't. That day, I'm going to be at the Italian Opera, attending Cinderella. <laughs> and that's just about it. <laughs> to me, he was the closest thing to a grandfather that I really had. And he's sorely missed. The Japanese Culture Club <coughs> extends their sympathies towards his family and closer friends. 
and we hope that he lives on in your memories with the utmost fondness. Thank you. My name is Pamela Peek, and I teach. I taught next door to Danny. Um, we met about 35 years ago through theater here in Shreveport. A funny thing happened, lots of funny things happened. A funny thing happened in 1955. Danny had a part in the Common Glory, which is a major pageant in outside of Williamsburg, Virginia. I didn't know him then. <laughs> But my father's from Williamsburg, and my family would spend their summers there, and we always went to the Common Glory. So one time, not too long ago, we were talking like we usually did about things that had happened, and Danny said, oh, I played so-and-so in that play. I thought, oh my God. You know? <laughs> we're almost the same age, we said for a few months, I think. And I thought, you know, that is so strange that that happened back then, and here we are now. I had a, we had a very funny thing happen. Um, I met Danny through theater here, like I said, that we taught in different schools until we all came to Magnet. Uh, we, had, we had both gone to the same play not too long before school was out. And I'd gone with my daughter and some of her students and some other teachers from Captain Shreve. And afterward, we were all in the lobby waiting to congratulate the actors. And Danny said, would you like to go have dinner? I had had dinner, but I didn't say I had, because I wanted to go with Danny. <laughs> so I turned to my, I said, well, I don't have a car, because I come down and said, that's okay. And I turned to my daughter and said, I'll see y'all later. And one of her students turned to her and said, Mrs. Hoover, did that man just kidnap your mother? <laughs> Heather said, yes, but that's okay. <laughs> And we had a fabulous dinner and the best wine I've ever had in my life. And we talked. Danny would always come to school early in the morning. And he would keep me up on the New Yorkers and what was happening in the rest of the world. And we settled a lot of the world's problems if they would just wake up and realize it. <laughs> but I will miss him. He was a truly magnificent human being and magnificent teacher. My name is Reed McDonald. I graduated from the Selwyn School in 1976. Mr. Gear was my soccer coach and teacher. I'm a McDonald. I represent the McDonald clan and the McLean clan here today. I'd like to say first off greetings along with our heartfelt sympathies to the family and friends of the Nile. Lost brother and dearest of friends, Mr. Daniel James Gear. We are thankful for your kindness today in allowing us to be here to pay tribute to your dearly departed. I'm here to pledge our clan's everlasting support for this group gathered here to celebrate this man and especially to give this message to Daniel's loving family. We, the McLean and McDonald clan members, are all here now and forever will be for you in any way you may need anything. This I promise personally. We are so very much in your debt for sharing this man with us. He gave our family many gifts, many times over. My mom has asked me to read this statement for her. Danny Gare is the finest person, teacher, counselor, that the McDonald children have ever experienced in their education. They respect and admire him for all he was to them. A very caring mentor and coach, he was always supportive of their choices. We love him and honor our friendship. We shall remember him forever. Thank you, Danny. And I have some personal thoughts, if you will let me Continue. Uh, you know, have you ever heard somebody say, you know, those that can do, those that can't teach, how wrong is that? 
Those that can do it better teach. And I can swear to God by that. My mom's a professional educator, and I respect your profession. To all of us, Danny was not just any man. Danny was a man's man. I know. You see, he taught me to be one too. What is a man's man? This he showed me. To be one, you need four things. First, you need to have faith. Faith in yourself, faith in your fellow men, faith in the fact that good always triumphs over evil. You have to have and keep your faith. Second, you need to seek the truth. Never stop looking for the light that shines in the truth. Stay in the light and never stop learning, expanding your knowledge. The third element is justice. We all know in our hearts what the right and wrong thing to do is, but you need to stand up when you see a wrong and right any injustice. The fourth and final element every man needs is a partner. And I guess you met Sally. Danny had all these things, faith, ability to seek and find the truth, and he fought for justice. He walked the talk. And that is why I'm here today, to share the gifts Danny so freely and generously gave to me and to all he touched. And to say, that you, say to you that I am a man's man and I practice every day to do, be as much of a man as one Daniel James Gare, my brother. At last, I have one more thing to say to Danny himself. Daniel, my brother, you are older than me. Do your eyes still shine? Do they see more than mine? Daniel, you are a star in the face of the sky. So remember, when you look up at night, Daniel James Gear was a star here in our lives, and he shines right above your head every moment of every day. God bless you, and I hope to see you all again real soon. I didn't know Daniel Gare as much as many of you did, and I'm sure probably a good number of you spent a long, long time of your life with him, but I had one year. Uh, just one year in high school, and already he left a huge impact on me. I grew up loving to read, and he just helped nurture that. Um, I drove four and a half hours to get here, thanks to my friend, and she drove a good six herself. That's really nothing compared to what I would do for him. I mean, I want to honor his memory just because he did so much for me in so short of an amount of time. So much of his life I didn't even know, and well, he touched me. He really did. He was one of the greatest teachers I ever had. And I mean no disrespect to my other teachers because they're pretty great too. But he was special. And I'm going to miss him. When I went down to college, he, uh, he recommended my first restaurant, Blue Dog Cafe. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but whenever I go there, I think of him now. It started my life in a way. I'm really not good. I had nothing prepared at all. I just wanted to say something. <clears throat> so, my condolences to his family, and um, may he live on in us forever. I don't really have anything prepared either, but um, I have a few notes here. Um, I'm a 2007 graduate, so I haven't had Mr. Gare for almost 10 years now, and that's a really scary thought. But my two notes here are, the first one is coffee. Coffee is something that I will always associate with Mr. Gare, because whenever I walked into his room, it would just perforate the air. That man, I don't know how he managed to drink so much coffee, but he would go through like five pots of it. And we were, we were absolutely, um, for sure, that he just had coffee running through his room instead of blood. And that's just how he kept going. And that's why he always just smells so good. He smells like coffee all the time. <laughs> and the second thing I have written down here is a vocabulary test. So 
So as um, Mr. Lurkey and Mr. Wells said, he's not a big fan of tests. And so he had to give us vocabulary tests because it was part of the curriculum. And I would remember we'd be sitting there, and as usual, he would start talking to us about something totally random and off the wall. And so we would take advantage of that a little bit. We would uh, say, so, so, Mr. Gayer, this word that's on this test, uh, what does it mean? And um, <laughs> he would say, he would say, well, is that one of the vocabulary words? And we'd say, no. <laughs> It's not a vocabulary word. It was. It was. <laughs> um, but then he would go on and he'd be like, well, you know, this word, it comes from third century English and it's, you know, derived from this blah de blah de blah and then we were like, okay, good, thanks. <laughs> but it was great. I mean, it was always a treat to be in his class and it was always a treat to hear him talk about things and even if it wasn't about what we were talking about, which it usually wasn't. <laughs> but. He was a big impact on my life. I treasure my high school memories more than any other, I think, and he was definitely a huge part of that. And he will be missed. And my strongest condolences to his family and friends. And I know that wherever he is, he's like super psyched that we're all here. <laughs> Thank you. Whenever anybody mentions the, uh, the Magna experience, as a junior that means particularly having Mr. Gayer. Uh, I mean, he's a phenomenal English teacher and he really uh, inspires us with the way he teaches. And uh, he's incredibly patient with us. Yes, we, as she just said, we cheated all the time in his class. <laughs> and he would look up and notice us discussing the latest chapter that we didn't read, uh, and he'd be okay with it. He was a phenomenal guy, and uh, he will be sorely missed. God bless those who survive him, and uh, God bless Daniel Gayer. Hi, my name is Nick Flowers. Um, I'm a 2008 graduate. I was fortunate enough to have Mr. Gare as my philosophy teacher and have him introduce me to philosophy and those uh, depictions of the classroom certainly ring a bell and bring back fond memories. Um, and I did want to say that though he was an educator, there was something special about Mr. Gare that went a little bit beyond uh, learning facts and lines from Ruby Dick that he really did inspire us to, to learn more and to seek answers out in the world. Um, I think it's interesting he taught at Southfield. Uh, I actually went to Southfield for 13 or 14 years myself, and I'll never forget they had a mural on the wall that had their mission statement, which is to develop a lifelong love of learning, and there's no teacher I've ever had that um, exemplifies that more than Daniel Gare. And uh, if you haven't seen the shirts yet, this is something that some of the boys, uh, along with Mr. Lurkey and the faculty, put together themselves uh, when Mr. Gare had to take a leave of absence from Magnet, and uh, I've never been more proud as a soccer coach than when those boys explained to me their idea and, and how we were going to put it into effect and they met him at the airport uh, when he got back in Shreveport and that, that really is uh, one of the defining moments in my career as a coach so far and uh, I've just been very impressed with the boys and I think Daniel, <laughs> Mr. Gayer, uh, has really taught them um, to love and it's just been such a special part of our family as a soccer team um, and one of those students his name is Shanti Tonga. He couldn't be here today, but he's got something that I would like to read now that uh, he wrote specifically this occasion. Mr. Gayer is one of the best teachers and one of the best friends I will ever have. No matter what mood you were in, when you walked in that room, his smile would brighten up your day. It feels like it was just yesterday that he would pull me aside in the middle of class and he would just have conversations about soccer until the bell rang. He would even sometimes stop me in the middle of the hallway this past year on my way to math class and we would just talk and laugh about any news going on in the soccer world. Before either of us knew it, I was already 15 minutes late for class. <laughs> Mr. Gayer was like a second father to me in the way that he cared for me and helped me through the struggles of high school. I couldn't have asked for a better person to have that role. But even though we were upset at this time, 
Let us be happy for him as he is finally with his wife in heaven. I think I can speak for the crowd as I say that I was extremely blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity to know and be a friend of Mr. Danny Gator. Thank you. On behalf of the magnet students who have not spoken, the teachers who are here, the parents who, who are present, the entire magnet community, and Mr. Mike, Michael Ilgen Fritz, I want to extend sincere sympathies to the Gare family, our beloved teacher and our friend. Mr. Gare was the consummate professional whose knowledge and skills remain unparalleled his dedication to this school and his kids was just incredible. We will hold fond memories of this great man and one that I will share with you is that Mr. Wells, Pam, whom you've heard from and Mr. Wells, and I uh, are early arrivals to school. I know some of you find that hard to believe, Kathy Sledge for one. <laughs> But uh, when I arrive down, uh, come down uh, Sea Wing in the mornings, I always spoke uh, to Mr. Wells and Mr. Gear. Their rooms are the first ones on the left hand side. And I loved the sound of his booming, exuberant voice. Just incredibly beautiful as we spoke each day. That voice will forever ring in my ear and in my heart. Thank you for sharing him with us. We will forever love and cherish what he has done for us here at Catamagnet High School and literally to the entire world, for he has touched many lives. Thank you. Mr. Gare for half a year last year because I mean he was gone for a semester but um, I sat in the middle of the front row in his class and right in front of me was the podium and a lot of graduated people that had his class uh, wrote their names and like where they were going to college and um, I basically like memorized every name on the podium <laughs> like you know like Megan went to A&M and stuff like that and um, I always wanted to be on the podium. I wanted to put my name and where I was going to college. And I think he wanted us all to be on the podium. He wanted, he was really interested in like where everyone wanted to go and what they wanted to do. And I mean, that's, that's all I have. Hi, I'm Austin Browning. Um, I have something from the soccer team. Uh, Mr. Gare was so much more than a friend, for, or so much more than a teacher for many of us here. Uh, for the soccer team, he was not only our sponsor, but our most faithful supporter. Um, I remember when he came back from California uh, back in November, I think it was. Uh, he came in on a Thursday night, and he uh, he was almost insulted that we didn't think he was going to want to come to the soccer tournament with us that uh, very next morning. So the next morning at 7:30, he shows up on the bus, ready to go. Um, but through the long bus rides to South Louisiana and the snowy games at Cargill, Mr. Gare was always there for us. Um, every time we looked at the stands, we'd expect to see his red and gold scarf wrapped around his neck and the big grin um, on his face no matter the score. Mr. Gare was so much more than our English teacher. He was our friend. He impacted Magnus Soccer more than any other, and it will never be the same without him. Hi, I'm... Matthew Carmel and I had Mr. Gear for just one short semester this year, but I think it was the most amazing semester of school that I ever had. Um, I think the uh, the thing that I'm, I'm going to remember most about Mr. Gear is a story I'm going to tell you in a second, and him inviting me to help him do the crossword almost every day <laughs> and me getting everything wrong. Um, uh, the story I wanted to tell you was. Uh, uh, it was like the second or third class we'd had with him. It was right after Christmas break, and I was sitting there in my seat knitting, because I sort of knit sort of sometimes. And he, um, he, uh, he uh, was talking to us and uh, shared, us, 
shared this quote with us from Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh, great minds think about ideas, average minds think about um, events, and small minds think about people. And then he turned and gave me a strange look and said, what is knitting? <laughs> So uh, I was knitting him this scarf to give him while he was recovering from his stroke, but sadly I wasn't able to do that. And so I uh, tried to finish it, but didn't get a chance. And um, I just I wanted to, to um, I wanted to give the the not finished scarf to uh, his family just as my last gift. To On behalf of the Catamount players, we want to thank Mr. Dare for always being there in the audience, um, chuckling at everything, even if it wasn't that funny, and uh, at the end of the show, clapping and screaming the loudest, and we're never going to forget him screaming bravo and bravissima and everything, and then always meeting us out in the foyer and giving us the biggest bear hugs of our lives. <laughs> so thank you for always being there. And we know he will be watching from heaven in our next shows. And, Someone up there is going to have to tell him to shut up. And <laughs> <laughs> thank you for always being there. And thank you to his family. Hi, my name is Lisa Ann Kemper. I'm a 2013 graduate. I was lucky enough to have Mr. Gare for two years because our graduating class had too many GT kids. And so I had him sophomore year as well as junior year. And I just wanted to say thank you to his family for bringing him here and letting him be such a big part of our lives. Because as we did say, we were all a part of the Cabin Magnet Players. I was vice president my senior year, and he was one of the very first people who told me to follow my dream. And thank you. I just wanted to say something really short. Um, I just remember this all of a sudden. But I remember being in his class one day and we asked Mr. Gare, Mr. Gare, why did you become a teacher? And he looked at us and he said, because I love school. And I just thought that was so great. And he always loved to learn, so thank you. <laughs> had Mr. Gayer for only one semester. He had to take a leave of absence. But one of the many things we talked about was his dog, Lila, her, his German Shepherd. We talked about uh, some of her several health problems. I actually want to be a veterinarian, hence how this topic came up between the two of us. And I know I came back to help another teacher after this, this school year had ended. And I stopped by his room. I'd gotten here early. And I was telling him I was searching for a job. And he came and told me, he's like, well, you know my vet, I just paid him a ton of money in pills, so he's going to give you a job. <laughs> so, it was just an example of some of his kindness and spirit and wanting to help all of the students in any way he could, even if it wasn't in the classroom. So, thank you. I give my condolences to his family and just thank him personally for all of the ways that he's influenced my life. Thank you, Mr. Gay. Leslie Dwyer, and I came to represent my own children who are grown now. Um, one of them's a teacher. They went to Magnet, and our younger child, Lee, had Mr. Gare. Lee Dwyer graduated in 2005 and texted me on Wednesday. I'm so very sorry for your loss. Um, I'm speaking as a parent to speak for all parents who are so grateful for your brother. And um, I also speak for myself when I say I learned so much about life and philosophy and happiness as Danny Gare's traveling companion because I traveled with him as the parent chaperone of the first decathlon team. So I would go to all the decathlon tournaments with Danny. Following him in Baton Rouge always got me lost. I was the co-driver, and um, he was always 
he was always so interesting to travel with because he always kept his eyes open. Um, I'm so grateful to Danny for um, accepting our daughter, Leanna, as the first female captain of the decathlon team that had ever happened in Magnet. And I'm appreciative to him because he acted like women achieving something that only guys usually did in 2004. He just thought it was normal. He just accepted that like, well, why bad an eye? He just had an acceptable, an incredible acceptance of everyone. And at all the awards banquets, Cato Magnet High School always represented Louisiana very well in the decathlon events, but didn't get too many medals. But at the award event, Danny would laugh the hardest and clap the loudest for all the students from California and Texas and Illinois who outshone our students by just this much. And he taught our brilliant, gifted kids that no matter how smart you think you are, you may not always be the smartest person in the room. And um, to his family, this is a crushing loss, I know. But when I traveled with Danny and rode on planes, he talked about your mother every other sentence. And he told me much about the pride he had for his brothers and sisters. And he treasured all of you all so much. Thank you for sharing him with us. I definitely wasn't planning on speaking today, but um, I thought of something to say that would really illustrate just how wonderful he was. Um, I might have had classes with some of you before, and you know that I'm generally pretty quiet. I just sit in the class and do my own thing, and I found that a lot of times like, I kind of blend into the classroom, even in the eyes of the teacher. But with Mr. Bayer, I didn't really speak to anybody in my class, but he always would talk to me. And I'm sorry, but he just, that's how he was. He didn't forget anybody, ever. Okay, so uh, we've had a couple of stories about how um, his teaching style is a little bit different than the average educator. Um, and I guess I wanted to kind of clear it up a little bit because it wasn't so much that, yeah, he didn't like tests. He didn't like to give you tests. He wanted you to learn. It wasn't about memorizing the facts. It wasn't about, oh, can I remember these vocabulary words for today? Um, but it was he wanted you to know what those words meant. He thought it was important that you learn, not just that you made an A in his class or a B in his class. Um, but what you could pretty much guarantee is that, so let's say he had a homework assignment. And so you get to the class, and they're small classes. Um, I had him, I was an undergraduate, I had him when he was in the T building um, right across from Mr. Lurkey. And uh, it was actually the last year we kind of destroyed it. Um, and it was, I don't know if y'all ever saw it, but it was all painted with that chalkboard paint, and uh, we would come in with, he had so much chalk, he'd just come in and uh, put whatever you want on it. He wanted you to express yourself um, on the walls of our classroom. It was really kind of, it was very, very magnet. Um, but, so you'd come into the class, and he's standing outside, like everybody said, you know, he's interacting with everybody who walks by, whether he knows you or he doesn't, and he's standing there with his now empty coffee cup, and uh, you, class started, he comes in, he says hi to all of you, and then he walks out, and he goes and fills up his coffee mug, uh, which had a German Shepherd on it, which we named Chaucer. And so you knew you had those like five minutes to ask everybody, did we have an assignment due to today? <laughs> We'd all kind of get together and be like, oh my gosh, I forgot that was due. Um, but he was, you know, and that's, he would never walk in and say, all right, turn your paperwork, it was, you know, let's talk about the homework from last night. You know, what did you not understand? What did you think you got right and you really didn't? Uh, what did you not read last night that you were supposed to? Let's talk about it. Let's actually learn. So I wanted to make that clear that it was, he wanted you to learn. It wasn't just about memorizing. But um, 
you know, he was, he was one of those teachers that was, he impacted you in ways that your typical educator doesn't. Um, and he was very, he did, he cared very much, everybody said it, he was cared very much about what the students had to say and about what we wanted to learn about. And you learned about a whole lot more than just English in his class. And I think my last thing that I'm going to say is um, one of the things when you had to present, um, when you had a presentation in his class, um, I don't, I'm sure everybody knows a little bit more about soccer now that the World Cup is on, um, but there's a yellow card and a red card, and there have been a lot of those going out right now in the World Cup. And so if you're standing up here and you start off by saying, okay, well, I want to just explain something, he'd hold up a yellow card. Uh-uh. That is not how you present. You have to start over. And he would just keep yellow carding you until he was sick of it, and then he'd hold up a red card, and you'd have to go sit down and wait until somebody else was done. Um, so they wanted you to be a good public speaker and a good presenter and understand how things are actually, I guess, because of all his theater experience, I suppose. But um, I, that was just one of the things I'd never forget, because I'd never had a teacher who carded you when you didn't do things correctly. So, um, and as a soccer player myself, I was a little intimidating, but um, I just, I guess I wanted to share that because it really was, he was the quintessential magnet teacher. You know, you sat on your desk in your class, you, you could, I ate uh, those pudding snack packs all the time every day in his class because I was already hungry even though it was like second hour. And, uh, you know, it was just, he, he didn't care about, you know, this is, this is the box of your classroom and this is how things should be done. It was, let's learn today. What should we learn about? Here's my agenda and what can we add into it to make it more interesting. So, just, uh, he will be missed. He was, he was very, he was very magnet. And uh, the school it will always be a little bit less without him. Hi there, I'm Abby, and in typical magnet fashion, I'm going to get up here and give a presentation I have spent no time preparing for. <laughs> what I mean. But that's the thing, is you go to Mr. Gayer's class, and God knows how many PowerPoints I got up there, and I just I didn't know what I was talking about. But that's okay, because halfway through, you strike up some deep philosophical conversation with Mr. Gayer, and you spend the rest of the time talking about, I don't know, I just, you know, usually there's something interesting, there's always something interesting to talk about with Mr. Gayer, no matter how relevant it may or may not be to the topic. But just a few things about his class, as the previous speaker stated, for him it wasn't about what grades you made, though I mean it was usually an easy A, but still, it was never about your grade, he, you know, it was about you learning, you absorbing material, and you enjoying it. A really common misconception that people would say is, oh, he just doesn't care, you know, that's why it's so easy. No, it's because he does care, but he cares more about you than what you're making in the class. And I guess the last thing that I really remember about that class is, you know, if you were bored in there, you must have been dead. <laughs> because just being around Mr. Gayer was enlightening, it was lively played soccer, so, I mean, I probably spent a good 75% of that class talking about the game last night. But yeah, I mean, he was just an angel. <laughs> I guess I'll... Um, thinking about Mr. Gare, one of the things that I remember is one of his pet peeves, which I'm sure many of students can back me up on, was uh, comma splices. And, um, he didn't, uh, he wasn't so uh, uptight about many of the other grammatical errors that we would correct you, but comma splices, they really pushed his buttons, and um, I remember he'd take off, uh, well each paper was about 100 points, and he'd always take off 5 points for each comma splice, and I remember uh, one of the first papers I ever wrote for him with the class, uh, one of the smartest kids <clears throat> in the class uh, got 30% all on comma splices, and that scared the heck out of me, so I made sure to stu study up on those, and I was careful never to make that mistake. And it stuck with me ever since. Thank you, Mr. Gayer. Also, um, uh, last year, uh, well, I graduated in 2012, and the other, about last year, I, I was dropping off my brother at a, a magnet, and I decided to go visit some of my teachers, so I went to Mr. Gayer's room, and I said, Hi, Mr. Gayer, how are you? How are you doing? I'm loving college, blah, 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 you know, typical stuff. And 
And I said, well, I guess you're about to have a class, so I'll, I'll just go. It's great to see you. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. Sit down. Tell me about your life. Tell me how you're doing. How are you liking college? What are your favorite classes? And I think that really illustrates what kind of person he was, how he always had time for people, no matter what was going on, and he always made time for them, because that was what was most important to him. And, well, we started talking about literature, and I think we talked about uh, Boethius and the Canterbury Tales, and I looked up at the clock, and before I knew it, 45 minutes had passed, <laughs> and I only finally had to leave when students started coming into the class. And I said, well, okay, have a great day, come visit again sometime. And I think that that's just Mr. Gare right there. He cared about people more than anything, and that's what I think made him so special to many of us. My name is Bill Spillers. I've known uh, Danny's family for half a century. Uh, that was mainly through his wife's family and his daughter, Sarah. And from what I've heard today, it sounds like everyone here thinks that Danny has a good name. In the Bible, it says you get a good name by loving God and respecting his children. From what I've heard about his teaching, I would have to give him an A. But I think of him in another side, I would have to give him a C. A C for being cool. <laughs> when I first met him, he would feel just as much at home as I did with my tie and coat and dress shirt if he wore a sackcloth and beads and sandals and long hair. And as time has changed, and he became in some ways more serious, but still had this bent. So imagine my surprise when one day I get a call from him and he wants me to see his daughter in his office for a health problem. His wife came with him, and she was collected. That was the other part of the sea. She was also calm. And where Danny was always confident, now he was very nervous. And he was sweating. And he needed coffee <laughs> and water. And the outcome was that Sarah's examination showed minimal problems. When I sent the bill to them, there was no charge for seeing Sarah, but I charged him $200 for the coffee we used, <laughs> the water, and the towels to wipe the sweat off his brain. Because the other C was, he was a caring father. He was a great friend. but I promised my best friend that I would try to represent her. Um, Katie Martin, a lot of you know us as Sarah and Katie. Uh, Mr. Gayer was so important to her. She um, has always loved to write and she's always been infinitely better at it than me. But um, Mr. Gayer really nurtured that in her. Um, a lot of you have talked about how he was a man who listened and who cared um, and that is so true, and I think one of the um, assignments of his that uh, makes that so evident is his journal uh, assignment. And um, I can't imagine how someone finds the time to read all of these handwritten journals. All of his students did one of these, well I don't know if the ones in the years besides mine did, but uh, as you can see some of them did too, <laughs> like Katie. Um, he was, he, I was thinking of reading some of this, but honestly, I can't read her handwriting. Um, but he did, you know? He read every word in these books, and he gave her a 100 on most of them. 
even the ones that were drawings of Jake Flett with half an ostrich body and no bones in his arms. Um, he just, he really did care about what his students had to say. And in that respect, he was such a great teacher and such a great person. And we will remember him always. Hello, my name is Mark Shepard. Um, I know you may not recognize me. Um, my hair's still there, I promise. It's just under a wig. Um, so I had the pleasure of knowing Mr. Gayer for four years because I was in Japanese Culture Club all four years of, of my high school career and also the president of my senior year. And even though some people didn't take our club very seriously, it served an important purpose at Cato Magnet. Many students that were too shy or nervous to make friends or converse outside of the club were able to come together and have this 30 minutes just to, just to have time to uh, befriend other people and make long-lasting friendships. Some of my uh, friends I've met through the club are still my friends today and we talk every day and I really appreciate that he was able to offer that opportunity to me. Um, the only real thing that I wanted to say was when he wrote my recommendation letter for Centenary, I, at that point I didn't think I was going to get into any colleges because I was so nervous that I wouldn't be able to uh, graduate in time because of illness and different things and lots of pressure from teachers and society and stuff. But um, it, he believed in me and I'm currently at Centenary and majoring in English because of him. And he just did so much for me. In that letter he wrote that my uh, ability for characterization was poignant, but the other thing I remember that I think was more hilarious was if I ever um, managed to break my marriage to my laptop, I'd be able to be more productive a member of society. And um, I'd like to inform all of my teachers that uh, that never happened. So um, I love you all, and thank you for coming here. My condolences to his family. Claire Meyer and I just recently got out of the Surveyors class and as other people have mentioned I only had them for six months but they were they were just so important months and I wanted to mention that two things that I mostly remember about Mr. Gayer were the first time and the last time I saw him. The first time it was the first day he had gotten back from his treatment and I saw him in the hallway and I was wearing my Mr. Gayer shirt and I said hi to him, and he said, hi, how are you today? And I just, I felt like I had known him forever, even though I had never met him before. It was just, like the connection was instant. I was like, this is gonna be an amazing teacher. And in his class, that was the most fun class ever. It just really was. Um, I remember through all the times um, when we were supposed to be reading our books, we would just sit there and talk. And then one day, I especially remember, I think it was the last day of school, and all the girls wanted to take selfies with him. And we did. We all took selfies. And it was so much fun, and I still have that. And the day I found out that he had passed, I looked at that selfie and I cried. It was, it was so sad. But, and then the last day that I saw him, it was the last day of school, and of course I was exhausted because finals, and I was just ready to go home. But I had gifts for my, some of my teachers, and I saw him in the parking lot, and I'm like, oh, I should catch up to him, and I should give him his gift. So I ran after him, and he was just about to get in his car, and I was like, Mr. Gayer, I have your present. And I saw him, and I gave it to him, and he said thank you, and have a good summer, and I hugged him, and it was, it was a great last time to have seen him. And so yeah, I miss him so much, and condolences to his family, and that's it. My name is Andrea Labor. I'm from the class of 09, but my story with Mr. Gayer was back in 05 when I was the quintessential scrawny freshman coming into JCC, Japanese Culture Club. And it just said so much for someone who had never had anything close to resembling that at our old school that there was just such a welcoming atmosphere. There were people willing to tell me exactly what I could do in here. and. It JCC just made my freshman year so much better than it could have been otherwise. So, thank y'all. Thank y'all all. Condolences to his family. Thank you very much. Okay, can you hear the one that is standing? I need you to stand. Mr. Gayer, um, 
had a second home. It was Louisiana. And one of the things that happens in Louisiana when you're having a remembrance is that we do a second line. We would like all of you to participate. It will start here with the family. We are going to go around the room as a second line would. And we would like you to let this group come, then this group, and that group, and just follow us and enjoy every minute of it. And we will end this remembrance and this celebration with a second line. And we'll be out in the foyer after that. And you can see the family. So, Mr. Trudeau, if you'll take us on this trip. Thank <laughs> you. 